We reached HRS-1084, Captain. It's emitting a very weak docking signal. I almost mislabeled it as normal etheric static. Can we talk? Things on Monarch have really cooled off. I didn't think MSI and the Iconoclast would ever talk. Outside of shouting four-letter words, I mean. Sure, and fish sticks are really made from Saltuna. Look, I won't knock the work you did. I'm sure they'll have a good cry, look through old photographs, Share a pint of premium double chocolate cacao gelato. But sooner or later, things will go back to the way they were. People don't change. Not really. Just being realistic. As long as they keep their business on Monarch, their situation's got nothing to do with me. Anyway, I'd hate to see you get broken up if this thing between them doesn't last. I never do. Anything else? Think there's a generator somewhere?
Entering quiet mode. There are a lot of charging Automex. What are the chances they're friendly?
Oh, I see you have activated your holographic shroud, Captain. Excellent. Becoming indistinguishable from an authentic UDL trooper will prove advantageous to your current situation. A UDL vessel has been tracking our position and just recently docked with the station. They are patching into the station's transmission lines now. I cannot stop... I've been waiting for this day since we tagged your ship in Cascadia, Captain. I... Wait, who are you? No one told me we had security forces deployed on the station already. Roger that. Just as a precaution, I'm sure you won't mind if we turn on the station security systems. Can't be too careful. We hate to leave this location undefended after a close call with outlaws. Shit. Thanks for the warning. Last thing I need is to get fined for overriding security on a restricted station. My team and I will just head out then. The UDL gunship is undocking from the station. They appear to be departing into space. Nice. I've never been great at de-escalation. Proximity analysis. External fill sterilization measures employed. Caution. Contact with electrical currents can be lethal to customers.
rated contaminants.
It's done. Now let's go get our money before Sublight sees what a creepy dump this place is. Wait, Chartrand? We've seen that name before, back in Cascadia. Something on your mind? Didn't I request no more fertilizer shipments be brought on board? Who keeps ordering these? Battery levels are fully charged. Thank you, customer. Sam, merciless on germs. Captain, I wish to offer my commendations for convincing the UDL's gunship to leave HRS-1084. I did not favor the idea of being stripped and sold for parts. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Mm-hmm. arrived at the groundbreaker.
Doritos Purpleberry Punch. You want a punch? We got your punch right here. CNP Borst Pockets can be microwaved in two and a half seconds. Borst Pockets. Finally, a base of our own. Soon we'll have eyes on every corner of the system. Well done, Captain. I heard about that. While my lawyers scratch their heads wondering how we deal with human salvage, I'm leaving the researchers in hibernation. Aside from the automated security, did you meet any resistance at the station? <sighs> I knew it. They've been shadowing us since Monarch, maybe even longer. I've been less than honest with you. Your assignments weren't strictly about the salvage business. We might have figured that out already. After the Monarch job, I started connecting the dots. I didn't like the picture. Then what we found at Station 1084 confirmed my fears. You and I have stumbled onto something big, something none of us were meant to know. Maybe the worst. Ask yourself. Why a skeleton crew was studying that Alta Vitae gas in secret. Ask yourself why stockpiles were hidden on a planet full of monsters. Before we go any further, I want you to keep an open mind. Can you do that for me, Captain? Aliens. I'm talking about aliens. They're the ones responsible for the deaths at 1084, and who knows what else. We have to put a stop to it. Hear me out. I'm saying it's aliens. I'm not asking you to like it. I'm not even asking you to believe it. But I need to act on this threat to the colony, and I can't do it alone. Well, at least she doesn't expect us to believe it. Right. I'm done. I'm officially tuning you out until such time as I hear the words payment and or shooting. The crew is skeptical. That's good. I don't want you walking into the unknown with blindfolds on. I assume you have questions? If we're gonna see this through, I'll need your trust and commitment. Now's the time for setting doubts aside. Conspiracy. One carried out with the help of human collaborators, assuming they haven't all been replaced. This is an invasion of our very cells. That damned gas is mixing our nuclein with Halcyon biology to twist us, change us, make us more like those monsters on Monarch. No kidding. That's how they want it. When I lined up the evidence in my spreadsheet, there was only one possible conclusion looking back at me. This is my data talking, not my anxiety or lack of sleep. Sharing my findings took a calculated risk. If you were a spy, I doubt you'd even realize it. Only your cells would know. Probably nothing to worry about, as long as you don't start growing tentacles or slowing down time. A 
If you don't believe me, go pay a visit to the Puppet Master who's working against her own kind. Dr. Chartrand is the crooked psychopath behind the gas experiments. She sold out her species, and I need you to put a bullet through her skull. She's a research scientist, and a damn good one. Before UDL poached her, she engineered a 0.2% increase in Sisty Pig juiciness. Now she's doing the same thing with humanity. Her fingerprints were all over Station 1084. You saw what she did to her team. It's cute that you'd think that about me. I just want to add Savior of Humanity to my resume. I've got ambitions outside of this office, you know. Besides, this way Sublight gets first dibs on alien salvage. We're far beyond theories. Chartrand's logs, the gas, the suspension tanks, how much proof do you need? Wake up, Captain. An invasion needs collaborators working from the shadows. She has access to the board, unlimited funds, and a colony full of sheep. This key card will get you through the front door of her Byzantium estate. Don't ask how I got it. You might not like the answer. By now, the other side knows what you're doing. Don't trust anything Chartrand says. She's compromised down to the bone. Maybe even deeper than that. Is it done? I see. If you need directions to Byzantium, it's the big fancy one. Can't miss it. She's a traitor to her species. I'll rest easy once I know she's dead. Easier, anyway. Just think of it as salvaging hope from the smoking wreckage of humanity. This is your initiation into a future with sublight. Want a steady position in our ranks? Buy one with a bullet. Well, there's your usual fee. What else do you want, a promotion? It's yours. Even better. I'll owe you one. I'm on a low patience, high stress diet at the moment, Captain. What is it? Not as much as I'd like. The board dispatched it to Earth on a resupply mission, I think. Why? Interesting. It's possible the board wanted the cruiser to disregard ancillary tasks. But to what end? I'll have someone look into it. But for the moment, we're pissing in the wind and shooting in the dark. Considering how you get around, you'll probably find answers before I do. Rizzo's Moth Apple Cider, a hard cider for a hard cider.
I am a dirty, autonomous, digital astrogator, Sam. I haven't cleaned my internals in ages. Can you hardly process the sheer quantity of dust built up in there? Tell me you've seen worse. Ah! Um, we'll continue this later. Edgewater, Captain. Town's been dark a while now. Could be a mechanical trying to sabotage us. Town's been... Go on. Got my hands full at the moment. Make it quick, please.
I'd wager this is the outpost. Rebecca! Anders! Come on out! Take a gander. The door's busted. Rebecca? Anders? You in there? Huh. Rebecca taught me this once. You can jerry-rig these old locks so as they don't open anymore. But we've only ever done that if we're in a real bind. Here, I'll fix it. Oh, no. Oh, no. What did you do? Oh, Nyoka. I'm so sorry. I don't... they were... That bitch! They were all set to abandon us! What would Clara say, huh? Every day she'd ask if we heard from you. And she'd have forgiven you! The kid had a soul that made the sulfur smell like roses! Ugh. I'd have leave your medallions to rot with you, but... Clara would want to be buried with her sister. At least... at least I know. Ought to have learned by now that getting one's hopes up tends to open them to being dashed across the stars. I hate to say this, but... Clara died thinking her sister was still fighting to get back home. I think... I'm glad. If she were still alive now, I'd break her to know the truth. Yeah, maybe. I'm used to disappointment. She was still so naive as to let it hurt her every time it happened. Only thing left is to take these medallions home, which means figuring out how to bait the mana queen out of our old base. 
The most pissed off I've ever seen a queen was when a foreign species was on her soil. I'd wager the stench of a primal might do the trick. That'd be boring. Half the fun in exploring is the fact that you're on an unknown trail. I've never had the pleasure of hunting primals, but I hear they're all over Scylla. Let's tear a few apart, shall we? I'm sure they've got pheromones. Everything does. A reminder to all crew members, there is only one toilet on the ship. Hey! Shit'll get off the pot, damn it! Are you listening in there? You can't be hogging the facilities for 40 damn minutes! You ought to see Ellie. You got a condition or something. Yes, you caught me ruminating again. Guilty as charged. What's occupying your thoughts? Customer. Destination reached. Scylla. Hey, you got a minute? Hey boss, got a hypothetical for you? You got a friend, see? Somebody you knew when you were growing up. You were close. Then one day, they up and vanished. Five years go by, they send you a message out of the Aether. What's going through your head? Right, forgot about that. Though, shock and disbelief's a good way to put it. Guy by the name of Clyde Harlow. He was an old friend of mine. Honestly, he was probably my first and longest friend. I just heard from him. Says he wants to talk to me. Says it's urgent. Figured I should let you know, seeing as we're on Scylla and all. Clyde's got a base on the other side of this rock. I appreciate this, boss. I know you're going out of your way for me.
Clyde's got himself a cozy little outfit, huh? I'm jealous. Tried to build myself a spot like that once. Didn't work out. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Yeah, sure thing. Ask away. Clyde was my first friend, but he was also my mentor. Taught me how to think, how to question, how to disobey. I figured the board got him in the end. Some guys with black uniforms snatching him off the street in the middle of the night or something. Yeah, I was just a lonely orphan kid getting my knuckles dirty. Clyde? I want to say he saw some potential in me. Like as not, he just took pity on me. So he took me in, gave me a place to live, gave me something to believe in. I've been thinking about that. Scylla's about as far away from civilization as I can imagine. Cold, barren rocks and the occasional mining operation. Clyde wasn't exactly a prospector. I guess we'll find out when we get there. That's what I don't know. The message was light on details. No explanations, as usual. Clyde. He was a blustery old cuss. Carried on about violent revolution and seizing the means of production. Clyde wasn't an idiot. He kept his head down, worked hard. Did as he was told. You're not gonna catch him standing on a soapbox decrying the tyranny of the board. But when the Mardettes had their backs turned, oh yeah. He carried on about starting a revolution. Said he was gonna do something big. Yeah, boss? Hey, you. Looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Hey, nice form. Good delivery, too. You looking to join Captain Harlow's crew, huh? All right, go on through. Got my sights on you. Nothing to do but stand around and watch the stars go by. to do but stand around and watch the stars go by. Thank you. 
have one of these. If the board comes after us, we'll be ready. Just since we had a good all. No freighters, no job, no contract for weeks. Standing around kicking rocks. Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the groundbreaker at long last? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see, or a you've aged, old man. Your captain has a sense of humor, Felix. Good. There's a time and place for humor. So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. He kicks things what need kicking. And we look the other way when he starts talking anti-corporate. It's a good arrangement. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. I'm working on something. Something big. Something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen. And I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy. That one day, he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix. But neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. Change is not to be feared. 
I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him. I understand that Felix is part of your crew, at least for now. If the thought of losing him troubles you, then understand that you're helping him solve a problem for an old friend. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him, and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. Then Felix will have done me a favor, and I will be grateful. I imagine we'll catch up on lost time, have a long talk about his future. Ratted us out to the board. He's been an informant, has been for years. When he realized I was onto him, he and his little cadre mutinied. Killed five of my own in tuck tail. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife might, Rosanna. Lives on the groundbreaker last I checked. Rosanna knows my crew by name and face, but you're a stranger to her. She'll talk to you. You think so? Maybe we should have a word with Trask. Get his side of the story first. You'd be wasting your breath bandying words with that traitor. But if it makes you feel better, by all means. Remember, I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. Well enough. It's been a few years, but I still remember a thing or two. You had a chip on your shoulder. You'd argue over anything and you'd never back down. What do you mean, had? And for the record, you never could admit when you lost an argument. You see what I had to deal with? Let's hear it. I was working on this plan for years, saving every bit I could, drawing plans, biding my time. I never intended to spend my life laboring on the groundbreaker. When the opportunity presented itself, I did what I had to do. I left. You might have said something. I had some ugly business in Scylla. If I told you, I would have implicated you. Hephaestus controlled mining operations all over Scylla. Most of these operations failed. The company pulled out and abandoned their facilities. Mostly abandoned, anyway. This one was running on a skeleton crew. My associates and I seized control in a matter of minutes. A revolution is the work of a lifetime, Captain. I've spent my life preparing for the day of Halcyon's reckoning. Everything you see around you is the result of that preparation. A base of operations, loyal soldiers, freedom from the board's oversight. Not all revolutions involve bloodshed and fire, Captain. The purest act of rebellion is to live according to one's own means, independent of any masters. One day, when the board is weak and Halcyon vulnerable, we may claim a piece of this system for ourselves. Until then, we bide our time. The skies around Scylla are curiously absent of patrol ships. It's almost as if the board's sphere of influence is shrinking. Besides, our facility is well armed and located on defensible terrain. If the board tries to lay siege to us, we'll make them pay. Hardly. The board is rotting from the inside. Tomorrow, next year, a generation from now, eventually, the board will fall to pieces. 
Entropy is the natural state of the universe, Captain. All systems inevitably dissolve. When that day comes to Halcyon, we will be ready. Something on your mind? Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. You're adjusting before you pull. You're anticipating. You... Of course I'm anticipating it. What if I shoot a friend on accident? That's on account of your stance. You want to lean into it. Embrace it. Work with it. You're in control here, Parvati, not the gun. Don't let a hunk of metal jerk you around. You've been around powerful machinery all your life, and you're always in control, right? I guess that's kind of like when the filler's shooting 600 cans of near molten cell tuna down the conveyor while I'm trying to tune a belt. Here, stand like me. Just so. Hip square. Lean forward a little. It's just equipment, and you're just an engineer using it. Ah! Okay. We'll try again later. You'll get it. I promise. Something busted, Captain? Hey, Cap. We've arrived at the Groundbreaker. All crew members, please be advised that perishables hey should not be left on the counter for more than 48 hours, unless you are hoping for an infestation of sprats. Clyde's got a crew of his own, huh? Good for him. Did you want to ask me something? I know, I know. Clyde comes off rougher than Mantis or Hyde. He's a good guy, though. Just gotta get to know him. You think he's using me? He wouldn't. Would he? That he's probably using me. Yeah, you're right. I guess he thinks I'm still just some wide-eyed tenderfoot looking for a scrap. Maybe we should go have a word with Trask. Get to the bottom of all this.
This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement. For the following story. You mind? Trying to have a moment here. Yeah, I was called that once upon a day. You need something? Rufus and I are no longer on speaking terms. I don't know where he is. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Oh, Mr. Harlow sent you, did he? In the business of hiring mercenaries, is he? I don't suppose you've got any evidence. That's Harlow's mark, no mistake. Guess he's not letting this one go. I don't want any manner of harm befalling Rufus. Not on my account. Yeah, well, you got reason to mistrust Harlow. He's a surly git, but he's devious. Rufus is hiding out in Emerald Vale. Got a few friends with him. That's as much as I know. Please, just make it quick. That's right. Our marriage contract expired some months ago. And seeing how he's technically an outlaw, I wouldn't renew even if I wanted to. Precious little. He and Rufus worked together on the Groundbreaker some years back before he vanished. A few years later, Rufus gets a message from an old friend. Something about starting a revolution. Something about getting rich. Abandoned his work and ran off that very day. So, Clyde sent Trask the same message he sent me. What's the problem? Word of advice, kid? Anybody carrying on about a revolution just wants to sell you something. I don't know Harlow. Never so much as bandied a word with the fellow. You're better off having this discussion with Rufus. Only that Rufus is in a bad way. He came to see me a little ways back. Said he had to go into hiding. Never asked why. He was here to collect his personals, complain about Harlow to me, and say goodbye. In that order. No, and he was particular about that. Said I was better off not getting entangled in his mess. Little late for that, says I. Appreciate it. No offense meant, just been a long day is all. Factory. What's a rare earth? Hell if I know, but it's rare, so it's gotta be expensive, yeah? Made a good pile of bits on it. Planning to blow it all here, huh? Blah, no. Burned half of it before I got off the dock in Gantry. Fees, fuel, some overdue repairs. We still going after Trask, boss? Yeah, boss? Captain, Felix and the Vicar are arguing again.
Young Millstone. You look pensive. I don't know what that means, but I've been thinking. It ain't easy carrying a torch for the Rangers. I understand. The Rangers' victories are your victories. Their defeats are likewise crushing. Are you serious? Wow, Max. I never expected you to understand. This may come as a surprise to you, Felix, but I understand what it is to be a fan. That's so. You know something? Maybe I was wrong about you. To be a fan is to live vicariously through another. You feel you are one with the Rangers. You ain't been the same ever since your drug swing, Max.
I don't know who you are or why you're prowling around here, but I'm willing to make a guess. You're one of Harlow's gun hands, ain't you? He sent you after me. Former wife. And if you so much as hurt a hair on Rosanna's head, I will put you in the ground. Yeah, okay. I'm having a conversation with a hired killer, but I'm supposed to relax. Thing is, you and I are at an impasse. Arlo wants me dead, and I've got no intention of dying. How do I know that I can trust you? You've got good instincts, then. You were right not to trust Harlow. I never betrayed Harlow. Harlow betrayed all of us. The board's got him in their pocket, been paying him off for years. All that palaver about revolutions? It's a lie. You can't be serious. I've known the guy for years. Yeah. That's about how I reacted to what I found out. That's the whole truth. Harlow's just another bored asset. A two-bit mercenary wearing a dissident's clothes. Yeah, I've got proof. There's always a paper trail when the board's involved. I chanced upon some correspondence between Harlow and his employer. I don't know that it makes a difference. What was I to do with that evidence? Bring it in front of the board? There's no authority in Halcyon willing to take Harlow to task. Huh. You ain't like other board agents I heard about. You got a functioning spine. You want to confront Harlow yourself? Be my guest. I hid my papers before Harlow chased me out. Back in the middle of the base, there's an old vent in a utility corridor. I stashed my evidence in that vent. Board sanctioned piracy. Harlow went after the ships the board wanted destroyed, capturing anybody the board wanted captured. If we captured you, we'd ransom you. Harlow liked to do the job himself, gather up the captives on his own ship, Vanish for a couple of days. Only that's not what happened. Harlow's been selling his captives off to the board. I don't know where they ended up. Re-education, Tartarus, maybe worse. Because he's for sale, anything the board can buy, the board will buy, and that includes loyalty. Harlow was a charismatic bastard, and he was ruthless. With Harlow in their pocket, the board had an informant, a pirate, a smuggler, and a gang leader all rolled up into one odious excuse for a human being. Sounds like a deal to me. Take it you've made up your mind. You gonna tell Harlow I'm dead? May as well. I'm never going back to that life again. Here, take the ring. And for what it's worth, my gratitude. Clyde Harlow, agent of the board. Yeah, that sounds even more insane out loud than it did in my head. 
I'm not sure what to think right now. You told me to be suspicious, but I never imagined Clyde would stoop to informing for the establishment. Then again, Trask knew he was a dead man. Could have been trying to shift the blame. I can't imagine Clyde working for the board. But we owe it to ourselves to find out. Trask said he stashed the evidence in a vent back at the base. We should go take a look. I've never seen the camp so lively. If you're hungry, Stefan's got supplies. Something I can help you with? You are welcome here. Captain, if you're looking for crew members Ellie or Felix, they're sharing a drink upstairs. You ever notice how our crew's a lot like that crime family from the Masked Marketeer? Then, Mioka is... You remember Kneecaps? Big square-looking bruiser, prize fighter, drinks like a fish. That's Nioka. You know, I think she'd like that.
got my sights on you. comes after us. We'll be ready. What's the word? <laughs> Not surprised. Trask was a dead man trying to negotiate with his own executioner. He'd say anything to preserve his life. That's a damning accusation. Am I right to presume you have some evidence on hand? Those papers don't prove a thing. We've all done business with the board. 
They own the whole damn colony. Trask put you up to this. <laughs> that miserable wretch. He's trying to undermine everything I stand for. You've got a lot of nerve calling me a liar to my face. How should I know? But what the hell do I care? Trask was a traitor. I didn't ask you to understand his motives. I asked you to cross him off. Clyde, look me in the eye and tell me it's not true. Tell me, and I'll believe you. Don't talk to me like I'm some common criminal, Felix. You're the one on trial, not me. I don't know what kind of poison that snake dripped in your ear, but as far as I'm concerned, you've been compromised. Make him regret it. <laughs> They got the drop on us. Get away from me. Down they go.
Captain, if you're looking for crew members Ellie or Felix, they're sharing a drink upstairs. So then I says, fine, I'll pay you back for all of it, with interest. Nice one. You must have had them quaking in their heels. I mean, I wasn't really gonna do it. I just wanted to make them feel bad. Pay you back with interest. I gotta remember that one. Would have felt better if it had worked. This is... this is definitely not how I imagined it'd end. The void's black, water's wet, and Clyde hated the board. That's something I just knew. Now? I don't know. I don't know what to think. No. I guess you really don't. I've just got a lot on my mind right now. This is, uh, this is a lot to take in. I always looked up to Clyde. The thought that he could be an agent of the board is just abhorrent to me. Yeah, he did. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna get over that. I hope so. I don't see this one passing anytime soon. You've given me a lot to think about. I'm gonna be mulling over this whole mess for a couple of days. Part of me wishes we'd put Trask in the ground. You know, I think that's just my frustration talking. Thanks for your time, boss. <laughs>